Rick and Morty, the beloved adult animated series we just can't get enough of. The show created by Justin Roiland and Dan Harmon has been delved into many times before. It's looked at and revered for its philosophy and how the show addresses the meaninglessness of life as seen through the main character Rick's eyes. But the reason I love this series is simple. Because it's funny. Now, that may not seem like a huge achievement. I mean, there are lots of similar funny series out there. You can easily argue Rick and Morty is a bastard child, taking the style from Archer and Adventure Time, the premise from Doctor Who, the sci-fi setting from Futurama, and the characters from Back to the Future. However, the result of this is unique, a show which respects the intelligence of its audiences created, finding humour in its science. And this is a breath of fresh air from both the characters and the series itself when it comes to comedy. The key reason for this is because the series projects one of the main ideals that Rick holds. It doesn't care. Now, I'm not saying Rick or the series creators don't care about anything. It is shown that Rick cares deeply for his family, be it by offering to sacrifice himself for Morty, or turning himself into the Galactic Federation to protect his family. And the series producers and cast clearly care about the show as well. They have amazing fan engagement, keep it consistently high quality, and are always promoting their work with extra materials for the fans. But what Rick, and more importantly the show, doesn't care about is the rules. Rick's disregard for playing by the rules is shown from the start of the series, with Rick threatening to blow up all of humanity to start over anew. Create a whole fresh start. That, 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 that's absolutely crazy! Come on, Morty. He then goes on to promote the killing of galactic officials because he sees them as robots. They're not robots, Rick! It's a figure of speech, Morty! They're bureaucrats! I don't respect them! Just keep shooting, Morty! And enslaves an entire universe just to run his car battery. You have a whole planet sitting around making your power for you? That's slavery! This disregard for the rules is present in the style of the show. Where many series try to get a message across, Rick and Morty say, screw it, life is meaningless, embrace it. Nobody exists on purpose, nobody belongs anywhere, everybody's gonna die. Where many other TV series may try and make a positive impact on world issues, Rick and Morty take the opposite side of these issues. I am so sorry. I didn't know freedom meant people doing stuff that sucks. This attitude is disconnected from what we have come to expect from TV shows and their characters. And this disconnect, the fuel of the humour throughout the entire series, is textbook incongruity theory. Incongruity theory states that humour is a result of a disconnect between our brain's regular patterns or expectations and what is presented to us. Simply explained by Marcus Cicero, the most common kind of joke is that in which we expect one thing and another is said. Here, our own disappointed expectation makes us laugh. This is so common that it is still used by today's comics. We get an expectation in a setup, which is then violated in the punchline. This is what makes Rick and Morty such a fresh animated comedy. It plays off what the audience expects a network level TV show to look like. It's something I didn't even consciously pick up until I watched the series through a few times. Now, back to my earlier point. Saying Rick doesn't care doesn't mean that he lacks empathy. It's that the opinions of others don't concern him. I don't give a f what you think, Jerry. I'm sorry, Summer, your opinion means very little to me. He doesn't adhere to the status quo. Traditionally, science fairs are a father-son thing. Well, scientifically, traditions are an idiot thing. Rick even goes as far as to say the way that we view the world is... What the intergalactic call a very planetary mindset. This is what allows the incongruity theory to work. Rick is different. He isn't held back by what others may think of him. Which is actually an endearing virtue in today's social media age. He doesn't let society's ideas on what should be guide him. Rick simply doesn't match up to what we have come to expect from a main protagonist. This attitude extends to the series itself. There are general rules of storytelling we pick up after a while and have come to expect from TV. Some are timeless, like Chekhov's gun, which states, every object in a story should be there as a plot device, or it shouldn't be there at all. Another is the general rule of three, giving two examples to establish a pattern and breaking that pattern on the third beat for comedic effect. Marie Curie invented the theory of radioactivity, the treatment of radioactivity, and dying of radioactivity. Comedy comes in threes! On top of techniques of storytelling, we also simply have high standards of production quality when it comes to TV and films. Things are clean and crisp. Take after take is done in order to get the shot right. 
You only need to watch one movie with bad acting to realize how important getting it right is. Justin Roiland and Dan Harmon managed to do for comedy what George R. R. Martin did for fantasy dramas when he started ruthlessly killing off main characters. They took these established rules and threw them out the window, refusing to adhere to the status quo of TV production. But the beauty is, the result isn't a poorly produced pile of confusion, it actually works. The series takes the format TV is supposed to have and flips the script. Instead of clean, crisp lines of dialogue, we get a slurred mess. Speaking of what, Morty, what should we watch next? With an almost improvised feel to it. Characters carry disdain for each other. And often break the fourth wall. Nintendo, give me free stuff. The audience is sitting there, and a voice in the back of their mind is screaming, I know what a TV show should look like, and it sure as hell isn't this. What in the hell? Yet rather than failing miserably, it is done in a way that is humorous and just works. My favourite example of this is the episode Rixty Minutes. The episode breaks all the established rules of television. Instead of a clean, crisp direction, half the episode has an improvised feel to it, as if the actors just ad-libbed everything on the spot. It's not clean. It's not been written and rewritten and rewritten. It's just the best bits that came out when the actors started recording. The episode distracts us so brilliantly with comedy that it catches us off guard when we get hit with the philosophical messages the show is revered for. The build-up and delicate plotting is there, but it isn't obvious that we're about to be sideswiped by a truck of emotions and deep thought like in other sitcoms. It is so well masked, which is important. If you want to get a message across, one of the best ways to do so is with comedy. When people laugh, they let their cynical guard down. This is why the creators are able to get their messages about the meaninglessness of life across without it feeling like we are sitting in a lecture hall. Rick reminds us that it's important to challenge established norms. <laughs> the earth is flat. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. Within reason, of course. He calls out the bullshit that he refuses to take part of and tells us not to be a part of it either. Oh, you agree, huh? You like that Red Green Grumbold reference? Yeah. Well, guess what? I made him up. You really are your father's children. Think for yourselves. Don't be sheep. Rick and Morty plays off what the audience expects from a network-level TV show. In today's age, where everyone is concerned with how they are supposed to appear to others, this series tells us to flip the script. Don't follow others, embrace not being perfect, and most importantly, have a laugh. This has been so much fun. So to Justin Roiland and Dan Harmon, all I have to say is... I like what you got. G'day guys, thanks for watching. Feedback and support I got on my last video was just amazing. I had some people ask what the best way to support this channel would be, and that would be simply sharing this any way you can. I hope you liked this video just as much. If you did, tap that like button, consider subscribing for more in the future, and feel free to share your opinions in the comments below. Did you get any of that?